Most of the great medieval alchemists dabbled in magic and all agreed that to obtain the intervention of Satan in human affairs, it was necessary to enter into a pact with him. Those who went to this length and became exponents of demonology or the black art were initiated with much solemnity. The oath to the demon had to be pronounced in the center of a circle traced upon the ground, accompanied by the offer of some pledge, such as a garment of the novitiate. The edge of the circle was supposed to establish a mark which the demon could not cross. Heavy perfumes, such as vervain, with burning incense and lighted tapers, always formed part of the ceremonial. The smoking brazier, which entered largely into the ritual, was believed to act upon the demons and was constantly fed with all kinds of mysterious vegetable and animal substances, those that would produce most smoke being preferred. It is said that belladonna and opium were always used as ingredients in the incense, in order to produce a state of semi-stupor and influence the imagination. The perfumes employed by the professors of the art had each a special significance and were offered to some planet to form a link with the earth. A mixture of saffron, amber, musk, cloves and incense, together with the brain of an eagle and the blood of a cock, was offered to the sun. The white poppy and camphor burnt in the head of a frog, with the eyes of a bull and the blood of a goose, were dedicated to the moon, while to Mars, sulphur was mixed with hellebore and euphorbium, together with the blood of a black cat and the brain of a crow, and then burnt. One can imagine the horrible odor that would be caused by burning such articles as these. And, as the columns of smoke ascended, the half-stupefied and scared spectator fancied he saw the forms of writhing demons in the air. Very curious properties were attributed to certain articles when thrown on live coals. Thus, if thunder and rain were required, the liver of a chameleon was said to produce it, while the gall of a cuttlefish burnt with roses and aloes wood was all that was necessary to induce an earthquake. By burning coriander, parsley, hemlock, liquor of black poppy, giant fennel, red sandalwood and henbane, almost any number of demons could be raised. Sorcerers of this class were called tempest raisers. The appearance of the devil presiding at a Sabbath or meeting of sorcerers is thus described by Delanca, he is seated in a black chair with a crown of black horns, two horns in his neck and one on the forehead, which sheds light on the assembly. The hair bristling, the face pale and exhibiting signs of uneasiness, the eyes round, large and fully opened, inflamed and hideous, with a goat's beard. The neck and the rest of the body deformed and in the shape of a man and a goat, the hands and the feet of a human being. Then the novices were presented to the devil in person and instructed to renounce the Christian faith, tread on the cross, break the fasts, joining hands with Satan, paying him homage and yielding him body and soul. Then they kissed the devil and signed their bond with blood, and a banquet ended the meeting.